Hello my dudes and welcome back to the beginning of a new reading vlog. This one's going to be a weekend one or a long weekend vlog for the stay at home reading rush. It's also the third week of the Owl's Magical Readathon and we have the Raidathon, <laughs> I love the name, on Saturday which is a 24 hour readathon hosted by Jade at JD Ray Reads. So all of the readathons, I'm hoping to get a lot of reading done this weekend. It is Thursday so the Reading Rush um, stay at home weekend started today and I've not long finished work for the day so haven't done any reading yet today so it begins for me now. So I've just set you down so we can talk reading plans for the weekend and go through what I'm reading for each challenge. I will also of course link all the hosts and the readathon announcements etc in the description of the video. We have four challenges. First one is read a book with a house on the cover and I have the perfect book for this. It was very serendipitous and this is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This one is a horror about four horror authors who spend the night in one of the most notoriously haunted places in the US or the world, the world's most notorious haunted houses. So it's a good old haunted house story. I'm also hoping that we will get snippets of their own work throughout the book but we'll see. I have heard some bad reviews of this, but then when I, when it was in my Wheel of TBR video, a lot of people told me that this is one of their favorite horror books. So very excited for it now. This is the one I'm prioritizing the most this weekend. The next reading challenge is to read a book in the same room the whole time. That is not a problem for me <laughs> because I mostly just read in this room, specifically on the sofa over there in that corner. So I'm going to read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for that prompt. And I'm very excited to be reading this illustrated edition. I had to include it with it being the Owls Month as well. And I'm reading this for Transfiguration for the Owls. This one is my favorite out of all of them and I haven't reread them as an adult. But this is gonna be really nostalgic and I'm slightly scared I'm not going to love it as much as I did when I last read it, but I probably will. So yeah, this is gonna be the one for reading in the same spot the whole time. Now for the next two prompts, I'm not sure. I could definitely double up, but I would like to not do that if possible. Um, the next challenge is to read a book set somewhere you wish you could go. Hogwarts is the ultimate place I wish I could go, so I could double up. And then for the last prompt as well, it's to read a book that would make you smile. I mean, this one would make me smile. <laughs> but I may add in a couple of graphic novels or manga or comics or something for those two other prompts. So these two are the ones I'll be prioritizing this weekend, but I am halfway through two of the books. The first one being A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I already started this one, but then I paused because I had a feeling it would win the poll for the buddy read that we have over on um, Discord, and it did. So I'm glad I didn't, you know, binge read the whole thing. <laughs> So I'm 150 pages in, not too far in, but essentially this one is about a character called Pip who wants to look into an unsolved murder case for her school project. It includes mixed media, there's a lot of interviews as she is talking to everybody involved in the case from five years ago. And from what I did read, I did enjoy it, so I'm really excited to continue and theorise with everybody. At this point in the book, we've just found out really most of the information to do with the case and now we're uncovering the juicy secrets. So I'm excited to get back to it. So even though it's not on the Reading Rush TBR. I still want to finish it out this weekend and talk to everybody about it on Discord. And also, Erafia, if you watched my last week's vlog, you'll know that I started this, but I was only two chapters in. I have made quite the dent <laughs> since then. So I'm 225 pages into Erafia. And you know what? Not hating it. Not that I expected to full on hate it, but I didn't think it would be really my kind of thing. Saying that, I did enjoy Crescent City, so who am I? <laughs> and not, don't get me wrong, it's not because like I have some agenda against Sarah J Mass or anything, it's just that her books are very romance focused and that's not usually my thing. Reading this has been quite interesting as well, having read Crescent City before this book, because I can't remember too much about the first two. I did recap what happened before I started this on recap websites, but it seems like she certainly has a formula or certain things that she likes to include in her books. I mean, everybody's beautiful for one. <laughs> and then we have have that sullen broody love interest you know I will say though really happy to have met Manon pretty early in this book I didn't expect her to show up so early I forgot that there was lots of different perspectives as well I'm not too bothered about Kale's perspectives but Manon's is cool also nobody told me that there were Withens in here I'm probably not pronouncing it Withens Withens I've never heard it said I feel like I've said this before on a vlog as well and someone did actually tell me how you pronounce it but anyway 
dragons. <laughs> and it includes some good old magical training montages, so I'm not mad at it. I'm not even halfway in because this is a thick boy at six, almost 600 pages. <laughs> But I can see why so many people were telling me that the series gets better from here already. I can tell. So this is a fun time. Hoping to finish this one out this weekend maybe as well. <laughs> so this is the TBR for this weekend. Possibly two more books if I want to do one book per challenge for the reading rush. But because you know I've uh, started these already. But I will let you know what I decide throughout the weekend. Hopefully I'll have enough time to do that. So I best get started. So this evening I'm going to start Kill Creek. I think I'm in the mood for some horror. And I also want to get in the bath and also read it on the sofa so it won't work for the other challenge that I'm using this one for. So this is the one I will start with and I will give you an update, possibly, hopefully, tomorrow with First Thoughts. Also, I wanted to add about this one. The, the love interest that's introduced in here, I don't think I like it. Also, they're related. I know it's like distantly related and it's fantasy, but still it kind of threw me. But I just wanted to document my thoughts now and say that I don't like this character very much. Watch me do a full 180 by the end of this book and be like, oh my god, my fave, ship, whatever, okay. Yeah, just wanted, just wanted to mention that. I'm gonna go read now. Hello and happy Saturday, friends. No, it's Friday. I keep thinking it's Saturday, it's Friday. I started Kill Creek last night. I'm up to part two, so I think that's around 90 pages. And I'm loving the way that this is set up. I have a really good feeling about this book. We've been introduced to our four authors. I like how it was done. It wasn't done all at once, so it didn't make it confusing. And we have the reason as to why they will be spending the night in this haunted house. They were all invited. They all thought that they were just gonna be the only one going, but they were all separately invited by this billionaire son entrepreneur content creator who is a huge horror fan and puts on like these big stunts to get a lot of media attention so his plan is to have them all in this house for an interview which he will live stream to his fans or followers on his website all four have their own reasons for accepting the invitation but it comes down to they want the media coverage they want to sell more books you know propel their career some more. And the little that we know about them so far, I really like. They all seem to have, well, the ones that we know more of so far, seem to have some tragic events in their past, which have influenced their books, their take on horror as a genre. Although there's four authors, there seems to be two main protagonists at the moment. We have one man who's called Sam, who's badly burned on his arm. He's had that covered up with tattoos. And he's seen as the more mainstream horror author. You can definitely make some comparisons from his work to Stephen King's books. They're all very small town, big evil, usually a kid fights it kind of thing. And then you have a female author called T.C. Moore. I guess you could say her books would be like Karen Slaughter meets Chuck Palahniuk, lots of shocking, dark, erotic stuff. So we've been introduced to all four of them. They're on a bus. They're not very happy about all being there together on the way to spend this night in this haunted house. We do have the history of the house, which is very intriguing. It has a bloody history. It was built by a man who was in love with a black woman around the time of the Civil War, and he was murdered and she was strung up on like a tree next to the house. And following this awful event, it got a reputation for being haunted. And it became even more famous when a doctor of the paranormal came and visited and wrote a book about the house, kind of like amitable horror style. But I like the setup. I really like the writing. These characters are gonna be fun to read about. So I am gonna try and finish this out today. Well, I'm going to read the rest of it today. <laughs> Hi, I may have got carried away and didn't give you any updates. I'm now on part four, like almost 300 pages in, but this just got so good. I didn't want to stop reading. The suspense, yes. The tension, the build up, the creep factor is all there, or it was. <laughs> I particularly liked, well, when I last updated you, they'd just gotten to the house. All of the things that happen in the house, I loved. But we've now had some mysteries revealed around the, about the house and I don't know how I feel about it now because I feel like I've um, experienced this story a lot through films and other books. So 
I'm hoping that it will surprise me by the end, but there's been some really creepy scenes that I've lived for. Not too many like jump scare moments, if you will. One thing is niggling at me though, one thing in particular. The way one of the authors is described definitely feels fat phobic and not a fan. Um, I don't know if the author's going to address that as being a bad thing or not. I'll let you know by the end, but that always niggles me when I see that in books. I picked up on it at the beginning, but I didn't know if it was just going to be like a passing comment, but nope. But besides that, I've really been enjoying it. It was a bit of a slow start, but I'm just anticipating what I'm going to feel by the end because this could go either way. This could be a new fave or it could just be an okay book, so... Yeah, I'm gonna take a break from reading for a little bit now and maybe I'll save the last part for when it is dark outside so I'll maybe start my read of, Massey's being noisy, I'll maybe start my read of Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban but I will let you know my thoughts when I've finished it. Hey everyone, it's now midnight so it's official, the, I'm out of focus, the Raidathon has begun. So I'm back at my tea station so I can have some fuel to read for maybe another hour or so to get a good head start on this 24 hour little shindig. I think it's fair to say I'm not going to run out of tea bags for a while. These were the only sizes left, I swear. Also watch it last me like a week. Very happy to let y'all know that I finished Kill Creeks. So that's one book down for the reading rush and it was good. I did Guess some of the things though, as I tend to do. I annoy myself, but it was still very atmospheric. There were some definite creepy moments, some unsettling parts. But overall, I think the ending was a bit too drawn out for me. I really liked the setup though. I think that was my favorite part. The characters themselves and the situation that they find themselves in. But as for the ending and how it wrapped up, it was just a bit eh, like I've read this story, I feel like I've read this story a lot. As for my rating, I'm torn between three and four stars, it's either a high three stars or a low four stars, I don't know yet, I'll figure it out, let you know by the end of the vlog. I would recommend it to people who haven't read a lot of horror or just are new to the genre overall, not that I've read a lot, but I can see the appeal of it and the premise was very very good. Anyway, I read this, yay, and I did start Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Azkaban, not very far at all. I made it all the way to chapter four. <laughs> so only 38 pages in, but I have to say this already is making me feel kind of emotional. <laughs> I just haven't reread it in so long and I'm having the best time. I've only read a little bit because I got distracted, but I'm having the best time rediscovering this. There's obviously going to be little parts that I've forgotten about. For example, the fact that Hedwig went to see Hermione because Hedwig wanted to make sure that Harry got something for his birthday. Like, oh, my whole heart and soul. And also reading this as an adult as well is kind of rough because the Dursleys are just the worst and Aunt Marge, oh my God. Honestly, I can tell that the adults in this series are gonna cause me so much frustration upon this reread because like Cornelius Fudge, for example, like how can you not look into the fact that Harry really doesn't want to go home to the Dursleys? Like. He's like, oh, they're your family. No, no, he's been abused. He's been, he's been abused. I don't know why I'm saying that with a smile on my face. I'm quite delirious. It's late. But yeah, enjoying it so far. And this is what I'm going to carry on with for the next hour or so. Massey's watching The Walking Dead. I'm reading Harry Potter. Very different vibes. We have D&D tomorrow at noon. So I'm probably going to sleep in until we have to play D&D if I'm going to stay up and read tonight. Um, so I guess I'll catch up with you tomorrow afternoon at some point. Hopefully when I will be finishing this. Happy Saturday y'all. I am sleepy. It's now 1 p.m. <laughs> Woke up pretty late because I was up pretty late reading Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm now on page 192, so chapter 13. So I read a big chunk of this last night. I wrote some notes. I looked at them this morning and what? So I'll uh, talk to you about it more later because we're about to start playing D&D. &D. Um, the last time we played, I almost died, like came really close to dying after doing something really stupid, which is quite out of character for my character. Not out of character for me though, but out of character for my <laughs> high elf wizard Varaxes. But we have leveled up, so I've spent my morning looking at spells, picking out a new spell, and yeah, here's hoping I don't die this round, but I will chat to you and get back to more reading stuff once we're done playing D&D. &D. 
I don't know who that is. I'm gonna go reply to that person. I'll speak to you later. And as a ranger. That was that my, is a nice idea. That was my next idea. Yeah, fire at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. As you got the so like Strad's like, oh yeah, we'll give you Irina. Just, just, just come in the door, and then he opens it, and it's just flaming mongrel folk. <laughs> just, just cast disguise on the mongrel folk. Say, is Irina? The only one that tried to save me was fucking Terry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one who was nearby. <laughs> So it's now around 6 p.m. So we only have six hours left of the Raidathon. Uh, D&D was fun. We lived to fight another day. We've got ourselves a swanky fortress now. There were some close calls. I didn't think we'd make it through. <laughs> and it's now time to get back to reading. Oh, actually, let's have a look at my delirious notes that I made at the, well, in the early hours of the morning last night about the book. <laughs> some really deep, profound thoughts here, including how do the Scottish students get to the castle? Do they apparate or fly in? Because it it makes no sense to me. I actually ended up googling whereabouts Hogwarts is in Scotland and it seems to be that it's up in the Highland Highlands as you'd imagine. But then Hermione says that it's close to uh, Duff Town which is still a while away from Edinburgh but if I was living in Scotland and I was a Hogwarts student then I would have to go all the way down to London to go back up north it makes no sense. <laughs> also, you can't apparate into the Hogwarts grounds, right? So the Hogwarts Express makes no stop. So anyone in the North, it just, I don't understand. Also, more thoughts include, I would die for the Weasley twins and do I fancy Lupin? So yeah. That's all I have for you on this one. These books have been analysed and discussed to death, but I'm really enjoying it. So I'm gonna get back to reading it. I have this much left. But yeah, gonna go and uh, finish this now. Gang's all here. There's tips over there. There you go. Hello, I'm back here making more tea to fuel me because I'm starting to flag. It is 11 almost. I intended on updating you earlier, but I was waiting for my camera battery to charge. But I finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and I may love this even more upon this reread. I'm definitely paying more attention to the adults <laughs> and their questionable decisions. I really enjoyed the humour and all the little intricacies and cool little things that I completely forgot that were included in the series. And this one has such a bittersweet ending and uh, we know what's to come from here. So very excited to continue on with my reread. I want to pick up Goblet of Fire immediately, but I'm going to save it for the um, newts, I think, in August. Oh, and if you didn't already assume, yes, I gave it five stars once again. <laughs> but after that, I, the plan was to pick up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and finish this out or read as much as I could. But I checked Discord and we're doing, we always do a little readathon um, for the buddy read every month. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> but we usually do it over a weekend. This time we're going to do it over a week. So there's some prompts and things over there as well. But one of the main ones is to read the buddy read, of course. So I'm going to save this and read it tomorrow because it kicks off at midnight. I don't know if I'll want to pick this up immediately at midnight. I think I'll save the rest for tomorrow. But once I finished Prisoner of Azkaban and had myself a very tasty dinner, I decided to pick up this instead. So I've just finished this. This is the second volume of a manga series called My Brother's Husband by Gingoro Tagami. I loved the first volume so much. This took me about half an hour to read. And the reason I picked this one is because it works for a free prompt for the reading rush. Um, a book that makes you happy, yes. <laughs> also, um, somewhere you'd like to visit, Japan, yes and I read it all in the same place. This one's about a single father named Yaichi who has a young daughter called Kana and his twin brother recently passed away and his twin brother was gay and married a man when he moved over and married a man called Mike in Canada. And this tells the story of how his brother's husband, Mike, a Canadian, comes over to Japan to meet Yaichi and Kana and get to know his husband's family a little bit better. Upon meeting Mike and learning more about his brother's life with Mike, Yaichi starts to challenge his own perceptions and prejudices. It explores family, it is so wholesome. The way that they're teaching Kana acceptance and the way that Mike and Yichi start to form a friendship, it's just, oh, it gives me all the feels. I didn't know that this was the concluding um, one in this. I didn't know there was only two, so that hurt. <laughs> I want more. And this is just so sweet. It has such a good message, but it's also quite hard to read in places because 
um, homosexuality isn't really accepted as much as it is over here in Japanese culture so it does talk about that as well and it's just really nice to see Yoichi's journey throughout the two volumes but man oh it hit me in the feels these two endings of these two books it's been lovely but ouch so I have about an hour to go of the readathon so I could pick up something else like a manga and see if I can get it finished in an hour but I'm too tired to figure out what will work for the reading rush prompts and the owls prompts and all that jazz. So instead, I'm going to carry on with Aerofire and read this one tomorrow. That's the plan. I probably won't update you at midnight. I'll probably pass out. So, see you tomorrow. You mean bread and butterflies? Oh yes, of course. It lads it's now Sunday evening I don't know where the time's gone it's already like 6 p.m. and I still have lots of reading to do I read some of this last night I only read like another couple of chapters so no new thoughts but this morning I picked up a good girl's guide to murder I'm now on part three so I only have around the last hundred and fifty ish pages to go and it is compelling. I was worried that when I picked it up again after having so long of a break that I'd forget a lot of the details, but Pip does a really good job of recounting everything, all of the facts that they know so far through her production logs, but it's not overly repeated, it's not annoying or anything, and I have a couple of theories. I'm hoping it will surprise me. I've only heard good things about this. It is a very quick and easy read so I expect to finish this today and I'll be sharing my thoughts over on the discord channel as well so the reading rush stay at home readathon finishes at midnight I've read three books for free prompts I would kind of like to get a fourth one in there just because I'm a completionist so I was thinking I've also been struggling to find a book that will work for the potions prompt for the owls not that I need it for a spell maker but you know completionist because for that prompt you need to read a book that's under 150 pages and I only have a couple I think and they're kind of bleak so they wouldn't work with the reading rush prompts and I kind of want to do a two for one here so I got a sample of a book that I've been wanting to read on Kindle which is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I've been wanting to read this one for a hot minute. A couple of my friends have read it and really really enjoyed it and it's under 150 pages and I think it will fit the prompts for Reading Rush as well. I can read it in one place and also I think it's going to make me happy because it's described as a book of hope for uncertain times and yes, times are uncertain just now so when would be a better time to read this? It's about Charlie and four unlikely friends who learn some important life lessons. I've heard it's absolutely beautiful. This might make me cry. So I'll probably read that after I finish A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I'll give you some reactions and things for the ending of this, but I won't spoil it, obviously, with being a murder mystery, so I don't know how much I'll have to say, but this could be a really good one. I also wanted to say thank you to all of you who left me feedback on my attempt at a rainbow shelf in last week's vlog. A lot of you told me you like the rainbow, but some of you did say that there's probably too many darker books. I agree, I was just trying to cram on as much as possible, clearly. So at some point I'm going to remove some of the darker books and keep the rainbow around for a little while. I was going to switch them around in this vlog, but I don't feel like I have enough energy today and it's already six o'clock and I need to get back to reading, so that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> So I'm 320 pages in now and oh hell no, I do not like the direction that this has just taken. Nothing against the book, I just, mmm, things are tense. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm really enjoying this. Every 30 pages or so I'll change my mind about what I think the situation is, who the main suspects are. I don't trust anybody. I'm questioning everybody that Pip talks to. And I love how she's uncovering connections between people. That's all I'll say. There's a lot of people involved, but it's not confusing at all. It's really well done, I think. I'm just hoping that I'm going to love the ending. Like I said, every 30 pages or so, I will change my mind about something. So I have about four theories right now. And I'm questioning everybody, even people that don't play a large role in the plot. I'm questioning her family and friends every everybody's family and friend everybody everybody everybody's guilty everyone's shady I'm really enjoying it I'm gonna talk about this more on discord but Nessa Luna said that this book is making her feel like Charlie in this meme in it's always sunny and 
I can relate. That is exactly me right now. And Massey just made me a cup of tea. Perfect timing. I found this cup and saucer on sale in Asda and I, I had to. Only a couple more chapters further in and I am pure rage. I should have known. I should have known better. I should have known. Anyway, <laughs> back to reading. Okay, so last 50 pages now. We've had our whodunit. I don't know if it's red herring, but I am surprised I didn't guess it. But now we're going to find out all of the details. And I still have one theory. Let's see if I'm correct. Whoa, okay, I think, I think she's jumping the gun here a little bit. There's been a couple of moments that have been a bit dumb, like not really well thought out, but besides that. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it, okay. I really should have guessed this. Yeah, I really should have guessed this. What? What is that? What is that? What? What? There's still more mystery to go and I really hope we get those answers at the end of this book because I only have this much left and I don't want to have to wait until the sequel. I know the sequel's going to be released soon but I'm hoping it doesn't end on a, too much of a cliffhanger. Wait. This was good. Four stars, I think. Four stars. I really liked the ending, even though it's a YA mystery thriller, it didn't shy away from dealing with harder themes and topics. And this was just what I wanted. I really enjoyed it. It was surprising, kept me guessing. I liked the formatting, the writing style. I am definitely going to be picking up the sequel. I don't know if it's going to include the same characters or if it's more of a spin-off, I'm not sure, but I will definitely be reading that. I'm very happy I read it. I'm excited to see what everybody else will be thinking of it, who's going to be buddy reading this one, for those who've already started. If anyone else has read this, let me know your thoughts. I really, I thought this was well done. It definitely exceeded my expectations anyway, and that's another owl's exam done. And now I'm gonna read The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. Um, this does have illustrations, so it's a little bit of a shame that I'm reading it on my phone. Catch me getting in my feelings from just reading the author's introduction. It says, I hope this book encourages you, perhaps, to live courageously with more kindness for yourself and for others, and to ask for help when you need it, which is always a brave thing to do. Oh, this is going to be a journey. Massey, I'm going to be weeping probably by the end of this book, so beware. <laughs> so it just seems to be made up of a quote on each page and the illustrations are gorgeous. For example, we have a quote from the mole which says, most of the old moles I know wish they had listened less to their fears and more to their dreams. And it just continues with that kind of thing, just little life lessons in a really easily digestible way for any age. At the beginning the author just says this is a book for eight-year-olds and 80-year-olds and this is so goddamn heartwarming. I'm going to try and not keep giving you quotes and things throughout this. Oh my god. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think that's the quickest I've ever cried at a book. I think that took me five minutes to read. What the hell? So that was amazing. I did tell you I was going to probably cry, that's <laughs> I didn't expect it so fucking quickly. I know. Um, so, the five stars. One of the best books I've read all year. I need to reread this immediately. I'm going to reread it and then I'll let you know my thoughts tomorrow because my camera battery is flashing at me. But um, I think it's fair to say that, that that really hit me in the feels. So, oh my god. I feel like I've just come out of an intense therapy session. Anyway, I'm going to reread that immediately, probably cry some more, and I'll chat to you tomorrow to wrap this thing up, because I doubt I'll read anything else tonight because I need to get started on editing this. I looked at how much footage I have, and... Fuck. Yeah, so it's been a successful reading weekend, I think, but I will wrap everything up tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.
So Massey got bored and decided to do something. What did you do today, Massey? <laughs> what did you do? Show me. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Isolation might be getting to me a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. It does look good though. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. <laughs> it doesn't get any it better, looks does it? It's so bad. I think it's all done. Yeah. It's hilarious. I don't think he's going to keep it for long. Um, but it does creep me out, so I do kind of hate it. <laughs> pretty successful weekend. Firstly I read Kill Creek by Scott Thomas for the prompt that was to read a book that has a house on the cover and I landed somewhere in the middle between three and four stars so I'm going with a 3.5. I really enjoyed the beginning, the ending just didn't blow me away like I was expecting it to but still would recommend. I then read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I gave this five stars and I decided to read this for the prompt of read a book set somewhere you would like to go because Hogwarts is the ultimate place so that's what I read for that prompt. Really happy I'm rereading the series. I then read My Brother's Husband, using this for the prompt of a book that will make you smile because it definitely did make me smile. Bittersweet, but lovely. I gave this five stars. And then for the last Reading Rush prompt, which was to read a book in the same room the whole time, I read The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse, which I've recovered from now. I read it again. And I don't know, there's just something about it. It reads a little bit like Winnie the Pooh. It made me cry like a little bitch because I feel like I just needed to hear some of these things. It's so effective because it's so simple. Just heartwarming little sprinkles of wisdom about friendship and being kind to yourself as well as others. It's stuff we all know, but it's nice to be reminded of sometimes. I'm definitely gonna buy myself a physical copy and have everybody I know read it read it. It's so comforting, it's like getting a warm hug and I feel like that's what the world needs right now. Maybe I am just baby but I have been really sleep deprived recently and really anxious because of panic driven nightmares fueled by anxiety. It's a whole cycle so maybe I just really needed to hear these things and that's why I had such an emotional reaction. I did see a couple of bad reviews for it on Goodreads though so it might not be for everybody. They did say that it felt too twee, it was cringy and they referred to it as Instagram wisdom so just be aware of that. But I don't know man, it hit me in the feels. I know that it has for a lot of other people. I I can't recommend it enough. So those were the four books I read for The Reading Rush and also I read some of them over the Raidathon and then I finished out A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I gave this four stars. This exceeded my expectations. Obviously with it being a thriller some people are going to guess those twists more so than others will but I feel like the clues are really well plotted so even if you do guess correctly it's still satisfying. And I'm so happy to see that some people have picked it up for the buddy read and seem to be enjoying it so far. I'm very excited for the sequel. So very happy with my reading over the weekend. I read some good books, three five star reads, one of them was a reread though, plus a couple of decent thrillers so not bad. I've had a fun time participating in the stay at home reading rush as well as Raidathon and also still doing the owls. I'll let you know in the next vlog how I'm doing with owls. I think I'm doing okay but I need to reshuffle some of the books that I'm using for certain prompts to try and have read the most that fit but doing all right I think. So I hope you enjoyed this long weekend vlog. I know I didn't get up to a lot but I did read a lot so I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these books. Do let me know your thoughts on any of these if you've read them, let me know how you did if you participated in any of these readathons, how you're doing with the owls, how was the reading rush, how did you get on with the readathon, <laughs> all of the readathons. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and I will catch you in the next one my dudes. Bye y'all.